Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Rory Reed from RoryReadArt.com and today we have a piece that was a commission I did for a client that uh, gave me an old black and white photo that had a ton of damage and so this video is just me discussing the in and out of the piece and I'm going to tell you about some of the bumps in the road along the way and how I overcame them. So as I said, uh, this photo that I was given was of a very old uh, black and white photo from uh, this client's uh, mother. That's who the subject of the painting is. And so I began, as I do all my portraits, with just a regular sketch and I do a black outline. It's uh, really like a deep blue, like a uh, thalo blue or um, Payne's, gray, Payne's gray kind of color. And the reason I do that is because when you paint and you, you know, go over the lines, the dark color will continue to throw, show through until about the second or third layer of the painting so you can get you can keep the sketch somewhat visible throughout the piece until you get to the very end and by that time you know you want all of the uh, dark um, the dark outline covered up so I initially began with uh, a quick layer adding in some of my shadows adding in the color that the client described she wanted the blouse that her mother was wearing to be green uh, as she recalled that that's that was the actual color in the photo as again this is purely a black and white photo so I'm not sure of any of the elements of the piece as far as color uh, skin tones and that that sort of thing goes so I'm going based on what the uh, client told me that she wanted and so I begin by dropping in, as, as I said before, some of the initial browns. Um, I just mixed up a general brown color that I was used, that I used, um, starting with raw umber, of course. And then I sort of warmed it up a bit in the mid to lighter tones with some cad yellow, just a touch, and some orange, of course, like some cad orange, just to get it warmer in the um, mid to highlight uh, values. So, did a couple layers on the background now as well, and dropped in some initial um, color for the hair. Of course, we're going to make that hair color uh, more black as we go along, but uh, for now, I just had some paint on the brush, so I just dropped it in just to cover up the white space and give sort of a, you know, a little undertone for the hair. And as you can see, now I dropped in some darker colors there to uh, mim mimic the shadows that I could see from the photo. And this was really a poor reference photo because the lighting in the photo was also not like a classic um, portrait lighting, if you will. It was just, you know, every, uh, every, everything, every element of the photo was sort of overexposed. So it was overall way too bright. So I had to kind of uh, just basically make up a shadow scheme to... Um, get the portrait itself to look a bit more dynamic. So we're still in the initial phases here and I'm just going from the reference photo and trying to block in the planes of the face as best as, as I can. And I wanted to leave the left side of the face sort of in shadow as well. while you know fleshing out the right side of the face and the right side of the painting uh, overall so that was kind of the shadow scheme that I came up with just to make an interesting painting and you know that was the initial plan 
um, in these beginning stages. So at this part, part it's uh, basically pretty rudimentary. Um, composition wasn't too complicated. It, you know, I just kept the same composition from the photo. Cut, cut off a little bit of the bottom part as well though. And as you can see, still at this point, we're just layering in our different values. Trying to get our shadows um, the correct value as well. Taking note of all the different intricacies as far as, you know, what's darker than what and so on and so forth. And it was about uh, at this point in the portrait where I began to have some doubts because as I said, from when the the reference folder that I had had chunks of the face missing from damage, you know, it was like an old little flimsy black and white. So there was damage right down the center, so, so you know, right in the middle of the forehead, the nose, and um, you know, the lips had like cracks and tears, so you couldn't really see the likeness so much, and as a result, you can see the um, likeness of the portrait now took on a more sort of masculine turn and so I immediately recognized that and attempted to uh, correct that. Usually you can solve that by thinning down a couple of the features such as the wideness of the chin area and the jaw, um, that sort of thing. So what I had to do as well is I had to take the black and white, scan it, go into Photoshop and then just paint it, um, you know, use the paintbrush tool in the painting prompt and sort of had to like paint in a likeness and uh, check back with the uh, client after I painted it to um, make sure that it was, you know, not too far off from how they remember their, um, their loved one. And it worked out great. So at that point when I had the corrected reference, I started to go back and paint the actual portrait again. Focus in now once, because I had all my layers in, now I could focus more on getting the likeness where it needed to be. So of course we remeasured the eyes, the nose and the lips and the bottom of the chin, etc., etc and then proceeded to work from there. And you can see with the retouching of the eyes now, there's a bit more softness in the eyes. And everything is coming up along nicely at this point in the portrait. The corrections I made with the Photoshop edit definitely helped me out a ton as opposed to just looking solely on the original black and white photo that was uh, sent. And so now you, you, if you do commissions, uh, as I'm sure a bunch of you know, it's very critical that you should um, get a up-to-date high-definition photo because if you don't you're gonna run into a ton of problems and as you can see here again I got a white um, color pencil and had to for a third time or a second time I should say had to remeasure all my proportions and um, basically paint them over 
a second time. Which is par for the course, you know, things don't always go, especially when you're working from old photos, things don't always go to plan. I usually don't um, take any commissions from super old photos because, you know, it's, it's kind of a nightmare to paint. You're going to spend a very long time trying things and then redoing them, trying things, remeasuring, redoing them again. Whereas with a modern um, photo that has high definition, you know, you can catch all the details, you can zoom in, you don't have to really guess what's occurring in the portrait. But working from a photo of this quality that I got, you know, it was a constant guessing game to um, establish the likeness. Because as I said, the middle of the photo was like basically missing. So now we do some more work on the lips now, and as you can see, the lightness is coming together. From where we started. And the client definitely wanted a more softer look from the original photo, so, you know, I just softened up all the um, features, such as the cheekbone, the eyebrows a bit, the lips, the, as I said before, the chin. I made all of them a hint more um, feminine, if you will, and uh, you'll see that as the portrait progresses. So I attempted now to drop down the value on the left side of the face, as was our original plan. And we're just deciding to, uh, to drop that in reason this works in a portrait I would say is because it gives um, you know different value changes is what uh, provides uh, the form or the three-dimensionality of any shape in this case the head so I wanted to do that you know sort of dynamic shadows on this particular portrait And so we journeyed uh, down this road to see where it would lead us. And so the face in general now still at this point was a bit broad. So I do attempt as well now to thin it down a bit more as well, especially in the jawline area. Try to round out the jaws a bit more. Usually having like a square or a very angular jaw is like a, um, you know, more masculine feature that you find on male portraits. So once we soften those out, everything would have, uh, you know, would be more in the vein of what we want. And it's very, as you can see, very subtle changes that I'm doing to shape the lightness. And it's definitely, like I said, it's definitely a challenge because you sort of, you sort of have about I would say 25 to 35% of the information needed to complete a portrait like this. And given an old black and white photo, you know, <laughs> it's, I, I, to be honest, I kind of just made up this whole portrait. Fortunately for me, when the client saw it, they was like, you know, this is exactly how she looks and they were super excited. But as an artist myself, this was like a, a total guessing game. And it was a good, you know, it was a good experience for me, man, because it uh, definitely a confidence boost that we pulled it off, crafting together or piecing together the puzzle of the likeness with little to no information is sort of a uh, something to pat, 
you know, myself on the back for. But it was definitely a long, long journey. I would say I maybe spent about 45 to 50 hours on it, on the uh, painting. So super long time. And that's mainly due to constantly having to change and guess on the likeness itself. And so at this stage in the portrait, if you look on the right side of the face, the likeness was more um, accurate to the portrait, I mean to the picture. And I think because of the shadow uh, scheme that I have on the left side, it was warping the likeness um, a bit. So by the time we got to the end of the painting, I did just lighten up both sides. I didn't have such a dramatic shadow scheme on the left. And I think it worked out for the best as well because you know, um, one thing that I figured out or noticed is that when a client requests a portrait of their loved one like this, they're not really looking for, um, you know, complex, artistic sort of fundamentals. They just want a nice picture that's well lit so that they can appreciate the likeness of their loved one, you know, Again, they don't care about, oh, this shadow on the left side needs to be, you know, super dark or, you know, they don't care about the intricacies of art fundamentals. They just want a nice picture of their loved one. And so I had to make that switch um, about halfway during this uh, portrait. And so again, even after all this painting, I'm still sort of in no man's land. And now I start to drop some lighter values on the left side of the face, as you can see, just to fill things out. Because I did let the client see the portrait about halfway through, and then they did mention that as well, that the left side of the face the you know they it was uh, a bit too dark so we had to go back and revisit it and um bring up the values there and uh just mimicked the right side and that definitely helped out in uh, the likeness the overall likeness of the portrait itself you know made things more symmetrical And as you can see, it's just a constant um, layering. As most of you know, I do use acrylic paint. So it was just, you know, translucent layers over and over and over and over and over again to get, to get the desired um, values that we needed. Just the way I like to paint. It's a bit more tedious than some other ways, but uh, for me, the, the end result is worth it, even though it takes a bit longer. Mm -hmm. 
And at this uh, portion now, when we're doing these layers, we do them in small increments. You know, we raise the value very incrementally because if you have too much of a jump in the value range, it's going to create sort of a uh, hard lighting effect. Whereas when you're doing a portrait like this, you want smooth transitions between your values. So you want to build it up incrementally so that you don't um, create any sort of hard lighting effect. But yeah, this definitely was a learning experience, man. I've never done a portrait from an old black and white, and you saw a little bit of it there when I was holding my uh, iPad. It was completely black and white, and we just, uh, you know, made up all the features as we go. And so this was a little bit further down the road now, where we revamped the, the um, likeness after we communicated with the client and now we got things to a more natural place closer to what the uh, client wanted as you can see we um, narrowed all of the uh, facial features kind of slimmed it out a bit to give it more of a uh, feminine feel and so now that we're on the right path as far as the likeness goes we um, just have to lighten everything up overall so we're just going to increase the value of the portrait overall and um, because you know that's what the client expressed and then once we got that done you know the portrait was basically complete And as you can see, that's what I'm doing now. Mixed up some lighter values and just bringing everything up. Because as I said, that's what they want. You know, they just want a nice picture of their loved one. They didn't. They don't care about uh, the art aspect of it. Whereas, you know, uh, an art enthusiast might appreciate some Rembrandt lighting um your average client that's coming to you for a commission might not care so much unless of course you know they're an art enthusiast th themselves but the you're doing commissions more often than not those people aren't really art enthusiasts they just know that you can you know paint a portrait and so that's what they're after nothing wrong with that of course and so you see now we're in a great place with the portrait it's nice and soft got the hair disappearing into the background with the loose edges and always a nice touch there And everything is coming along nicely. Just doing some work on this um, element of the blouse here. Client expressed to me that on the left side of the little uh, white frills you see there, that a uh, dog actually bit off that bottom left part there. So. I had I painted it just like it was shown in the photo but then later on she said if I could just go ahead and fill it back out that that was what she wanted so later on down in the portrait that's what I ended up doing after our second consultation she uh, expressed that she wanted it lighter 
she want you know the overall value so we lightened up the shirt and the right side of the face underneath the neck area there and the actual um, face itself and then we filled in the uh, frills is what I want to call them on the blouse and also readjusted the widow's peak area to be a bit more aligned to the center it was a little bit off center in the picture but as I said might just be because of the damage that was in the picture that uh, made it appear so to me at the time when I was looking at it but even way even either either way is um, you know that's the beauty of being a, an artist you can just craft the portrait to your clients liking and the, the the end goal is that you know they appreciate it not necessarily about you know how, what's accurate and what's not um, in reference to your uh, photo so it's an interesting balance to uh, to weigh trying to do some detail work now on the lips just add in some micro highlights to give it a bit more dimension and again this is a, a great skill that you do need as a painter is that again I'm working solely from a black and white photo I don't know what her skin color looks like because I've never seen it but based on the values in the black and white photo I can closely guesstimate right I'm just I'm just picking a specific brown color and then matching values and a lot of times that's how you know artists in general analyze a photo a picture like you know any type of painting any type of um, photograph that kind of thing like when I go to art shows art galleries and I'm looking at other people's work I'm not necessarily paying attention to you know looking at through looking at it and looking at them through an artist's eye I'm not necessarily paying attention to the color in the painting or the piece of artwork I sort of desaturate it in my brain and look on the values on the you know on a, like a black a gray scale black and white and then after I appreciate it on that level then I'll see what kind of story they're telling with their color choice that's sort of how I as an artist myself um, ingest art You know, you look at you look at all the elements, the, the composition, the value range, the colors, etc., etc. As you can see now, portrait is a million times better than where it was sort of a windy road we took on this one because of the poor source material namely the uh, old photo old damaged photo and so this speaks to as well the importance of picking good reference material uh, you know when you're planning to do a painting and so here now you see is where I begin to lighten up significantly the left side to match it um, to the right. And so just a well lit illuminated uh, face is what this client wanted. Not necessarily anything fancy in terms of art fundamentals, you know what I mean? or portrait fundamentals so we're getting that cheekbone in as well uh, 
again just doing gradual value increases and then re-blending it back into the uh, underlying layers of paint and just going up little by little. And as you can see, we filled in the little uh, frills there on the brows, on the blouse, I should say. And once we get everything uh, up to where it needs to be value wise, then we'll focus on doing our final brightest highlights on the nose and the forehead and the lips cheekbone as well and that should give us our final you know pop so yeah man doing doing um, portraits from old photos is no joke serious business ton a ton of work ton of research ton of planning ton of reworks ton of corrections but i was proud of myself for this one man to to sort of guess my way through you know filling in the puzzle pieces with not a lot of information and then ending up exactly where we needed to be the client client uh, expressing their love I, like I've even gotten messages from the client um, weeks after you know saying that it's, it's good to have their loved one in the in the residence <laughs> looking at them or whatever so you know it's good this one was a like I said a labor of love I don't you know typically I, I would turn down uh, a commission of this sort from like an old damaged photo but uh, you know this one was uh, special so we uh, I agreed to do it and happy that I did man it's a, it was a new sort of experience a good learning experience and I definitely learned a lot learned some new techniques and ways to um, get around hurdles that come up for example using the Photoshop the, the painting tool in Photoshop to just guesstimate and fill in the missing pieces of the uh, damaged photo to um, estimate the likeness that sort of thing it wasn't just you know as straightforward as sitting down and painting uh, had to um, do some auxiliary work still just in the process of lightening everything up making sure to not lose the uh, planes of the face you know the lines where the cheekbone is and that sort of thing so that was the main focus and each of these um, I usually paint in different uh, sessions you know so each session it was about two to three hours at a time here I'm just lightening up the background a bit more now as well just popping everything up as the client uh, expressed uh, that she wanted also now mixing some warmer tones of the brown color that we used and we're going to put those in, of course, at around the uh, cheeks and the lips. Uh, you can see I already touched the lips a little bit there. So the lips are now warmer. And we're going to do the, you know, it's, it's sort of like um, sculpting, so to speak. When I start, I just mix my values, darkest to lightest, and I just use that one color. Then towards the end, I layer it with whatever mood I'm going for if I want a cool tone or a warm tone I add those on at the end you could do it you could do it um, you know 
with accurate planning from the beginning, but this is just how I have always done it, so, you know, I stick to what I know. And this is a critical um, area as well because, you know, dropping in these value changes can alter, as I said before, can alter the structure of the face. So you gotta, this is where knowing the anatomy comes into play. You know, you can get away with painting uh, without knowing anatomy only for so long. Knowing the anatomy is is like a lifesaver because then you you know even if you lose some of your lines you you understand what's happening beneath the surface of the skin and you can keep everything where it needs to be with uh, that knowledge And so we're coming close towards the end now. We got everything nice and brightened up. Redoing some of our mid-tone uh, shadows now as well. Because it's, you know, it's not just as simple as increasing the uh, value. You also have to bring all the shadows up a, ton a bit as well and uh, you know, make sure everything reads well. And as you can see, that's what I'm doing here now is um, doing a very slight value drop in the areas or the planes of the face that uh, are, you know, not receiving as much light as some of the brighter areas. And that's what gives the face uh, the form. Dropping in some of that warmer tone now on the nose as well. in the cheek area as well now too. And doing some value increases on the nose, the bulb of the nose as well. And as you can see, everything is coming together nicely. And so I did um, work on this off and on, I would say for about um, maybe two months total. Client didn't really give me a deadline, so I would work on it for, you know, two, three days and then stop and then revisit it again, two, three days and stop, that type of thing in the middle of doing my other, uh, other work as well. So we see now we're doing some of our final brightest highlight touches, got the liner brush out. Putting the highlights on and doing a little bit of blending as to not get rid of all of it. And, um, you know, works well. And so this is still sort of a... Um, darker skin tone painting uh, lighter than usual in some of the other videos we have on the channel so this video is a good one to um, gauge how to work in the uh, light a bit lighter of a spectrum than uh, some of the other um, tutorials I have on the channel same concept though same principle you know you just work 
on the lighter side of the spectrum, so to speak. But all the regular uh, fundamentals still apply. And the final pass on the highlights as well now really brings a new element of uh, realism to the face. And we're, you know, definitely on the final stages now. Putting some final cool highlights as well now. Um, I had a, a little pink and green theme going here as well. Um, so if you see the, the painting in person, there is uh, hints of pink in the warmer areas and slight hint of green in the brightest highlighted areas. I thought the, it would work well against the green of the blouse and um, the uh, blue background. Final, final pass now with the liner brush. And you can see with every pass of uh, adding, uh, layering the highlights, you know, it, the realism goes up a step as well. So you, I apply these and then I do a slight micro blend of them as well because you don't want them too pronounced. You want them to, you know, appear natural. So put them on and you blend them back in. You might leave one or two dots at full for, at full uh, saturation, and then you know that's about it. And so yeah, I'm hoping you guys learned a lot from this. I know I certainly did. It's an interesting journey. I look back at it with, uh, you know, a happy uh, heart, if you will. Definitely more work than normal, though. So we'll have to, you know, we'll have to <laughs> proceed cautiously if we ever get uh, or decide to do another one of these... Uh, portraits from old damaged photos so because I can easily see where you know it could all go wrong and you have to start over <laughs> time well spent though time well spent you want to get these sort of experiences under your knee under your belt so you can become a well-rounded painter in my opinion. You know, this would sort of help if you were like a retoucher or, or you know, a paint or painting restorer, that kind of thing. So it's a good technique or good uh, skills to have. Knowing how to just piece things together um, as you go along, you know. So we're doing a little pass on the blouse here as well. And this is definitely the final stages now. We kept the blouse sort of, um, you know, loose as well. Focal point was the portrait itself. So, you know, that's the one we, that is more refined, detail and rendered out. And after a ton of work and ton of improvements and uh, back and forth with the client, this is where we end up.
and I was very very happy with it so this is the final piece I hope you guys enjoyed this let me know what you think about it and you know if you have any techniques of your own that you use to um, you know get around working from these sort of poor photos guys follow me on teespring um, my store is teespring.com slash store slash rory read art you can check out my merch over there also follow me on all social media subscribe to this channel and like this video and i'm also on instagram uh, twitch and tiktok under tripler 999 links will be in the description as well and uh yeah that's gonna be it guys hope you guys have a great day thank you again for watching hope you guys uh you know keep your painting journey going i'll catch you next time peace